Not all who wander are lost. Hello, ballers, and welcome to your Holy Priest Guide for patch 7.25 onwards. We're going to be looking at what is the purest and rawest healer in the game, in my opinion, sticking very much to the tradition of what you would think a healer does in an RPG. The Holy Priest, the long standing. Let's go. Well, let's get into sorting out our Holy Priest, shall we? As you can see, I've done the Mage Tower on this guy, had great fun with it, and I've been honestly enjoying my time with the holy priest what i found here is a spec that on the surface is quite basic and i think fills the role of the kind of standard healer that you would expect from any rpg and what they've done is actually baked in a huge amount of little synergies like really tiny things that i think most people probably aren't aware of and why they struggle with certain things when i when i actually came down to people asking me about the mage tower for example it, it turned out a lot of people didn't understand the synergies that actually go on with the holy priest as on the face of it it does look quite basic so hopefully we can open your eyes to a few of those things and you might go oh okay now that makes sense let's talk about stats first of all so luckily with the holy priest your stats are reasonably balanced the only thing you're trying to avoid really is verse and you tend to edge out mastery above all else critical strike has some nice synergy as well crits obviously double uh, increasing the effectiveness of your healing and if we look at our artifact weapon we have things like critical heals if we have the blessing of ture uh, critical heals with heal or flash heal have a chance to imbue your essence of ture increasing all healing you do by 20 percent for 12 seconds so crit comes in handy there haste obviously just flat out casting more spells that's gonna have some great issue uh, synergy with serendipity and also giving you extra ticks to things like renew if you get more haste and mastery of course which you tend to favor more than anything because it's very reliable is the echo of light uh, your direct healing spells heal for an additional 20 percent over six seconds so what you have is when you cast a heal they will also gain a buff uh, which is this echo of light buff you can see i have it there which is healing for thirty thousand every three seconds so all these stats work in your favor, and they all do something with your Holy Priest, right? The only reason we dodge versatility is, well, we don't get the most benefit out of it. It increases damage and healing, so we don't get real the damage bonus. It decreases damage taken. We're not that difficult to, uh, to survive things. We have some decent survivability as a Holy Priest, so they're not really that required. We have things like Focused Will, where melee attacks against us will cause us to gain Focused Will, reducing damage you take by 15% for 8 seconds, stacking up to 2 times. You gain 30% damage reduction from there, and also our ability to fade and just drop all threat and everything right so we could just back out of there and not have to worry about anything whatsoever so the big thing about the holy priest the main thing i want to get through to you is serendipity so when you cast flash heal or heal the remaining cooldown on holy word serenity is reduced by seven seconds so what is that uh, these are our miracle spells. A lot of people don't like them being called miracles, but I will point out it says perform a miracle, right? That's what they are. So what we have is access to three different miracle style spells. We have Holy Word Serenity, which is performs a miracle, healing an ally for 1.2 million on a one minute cooldown. It's a huge, enormous single target heal, as you can see there. And it also has the power to bring two ray into it, which will duplicate your spells. I'll cast a similar spell, as they call it. You can see the way he's activating there. You can see the, the little shimmer that's going on. We also have Holy Word Sanctify. This is our AoE version. So we have a Holy Word, a single target miracle, and our AoE one. Release a miraculous light at the target location, healing up to six allies in 10 yards for 365,000. So it just drops on the, on the floor, instant cast, blumpf, just, just absolutely tons of healing. And not very expensive either at 55,000 mana. Now, similar to the way Flash Heal and Heal reset our Holy Word Serenity, when you cast Prayer of Healing or Prayer of Mending, the remaining cooldown on Holy Word Sanctify, which is our AOE one, is reduced by 7 seconds. So what I want to show you here is you can see Serenity is off cooldown here. I'm using the Spellbook here because my spells are hidden. Uh, so when I use it, you can see it's on cooldown. Now, when I Flash Heal, watch that countdown time. You see the way big chunks of it are just coming off? Yeah? That means that we can actively be using these spells a lot. One of the mistakes I made when i got back into the holy priest to prepare for the guides was in fact think treating these as like emergency spells right because it does such a huge amount of healing and it's instant cast and stuff i treated it as like a in a, just like save it until i need it so i'm getting the most out of it that's actually not the case but the way our synergies work with other spells it's better to actually get this thing going like use it on something don't just hit somebody up full health obviously uh, get it going and then use your other heals and then have that come back because you're gonna if you're like holding on to it you're just missing out on a lot of them 
It's on su such a short cooldown. You can see how quickly you can reset this thing. You're just missing out on huge amounts of them, uh, which is not beneficial to anybody. So once you get into the habit of actively using them, and even I found myself using Sanctify, if I'm running and the tank's dying and I've used Serenity and I can't cast yet, just dropping like a Sanctify and stuff, single target, healing some other people, and then getting into like start spamming and stuff. Getting these use used and on cooldown is really good. So similar with Sanctify's Prayer of Healing, if we watch the cooldown there, if I use a Prayer of Healing, you'll see a big chunk of it come off there. And if I use Prayer of Mending, you'll see it also does the same thing. We also have Holy Word Chastise, uh, a spell that, again, doesn't seem to get enough usage out of a lot of players. I know I wasn't using it anywhere near enough. Again, it's a one-minute cooldown. Chastise the target for 500,000 holy damage, so it's not shit damage whatsoever. And incapacitates them for five seconds. And we can also use talents to make that a proper stun, making it invaluable in Mythic Plus and stuff. Uh, damage is a big part of the game. So we have things built in where we can uh, smite things, and then we can holy fire them. And if we smite, not only is it resetting our holy word chastise, but we actually get this proc here, as you can see, which then gives us our holy fire reset so you can stack holy fire twice. We have lots of little DPS intricacies. And of course, you'll notice that smite doesn't cost me anything. I can keep smiting all day. Holy fire cost me something. It's not a great deal, uh, but it absolutely keeps going. And then you reset your holy word chastise, allowing you to add a lot of DPS to your party so these are things that you want to be aware of that your holy words you want to be actively using them at all times right you want to be making good use of them so we talked there about flash heal flash heal is our like very very fast spell doesn't heal for a huge amount unless you're actually propping it up with other stuff like getting all the bonus healing that we can pick up we're going to talk about that soon uh heal which is far more efficient at twenty thousand, but does it heal for a great deal yeah <laughs> so you got flash heal that heals for three hundred thousand. heal heals for three hundred thousand as well but the cast time is extremely long so when it gets down to the bare bones heal is something that you cast when you know you've absolutely got time but most of the time, certainly as you get into the higher Mythic Pluses, you can see uh, on this character, I did like heal to 17 this week, uh, is your mostly Flash Heal and Serenity spamming and getting this going and getting all your procs and stuff working for you. I mentioned our DPS spells there, so they're clear to you. AoE healing then. So we have Prayer of Mending. Okay, so Prayer of Mending is a wonderful spell and something that generally we're going to keep on cooldown at all times regardless of our scenario. Uh, places a ward or a party or raid member that heals them for 100,000 the next time they take damage and then it jumps to another party or raid member within 20 yards. Jumps up to five times and lasts 30 seconds after each jump, which means you can get a lot of them out. And once again... All these little synergies. Prayer of Mending is a 30% chance to not consume a charge when it jumps to a new target. We also have things, uh, if I can find the right one, when we're doing our Divine Hymn. Where are you? Uh, Holy Word Serenity, Holy Word Sanctify, finish their cooldown. There's a, yeah, Divine Hymn is active. Prayer of Mending jumps to a new target every 0.8 seconds without consuming any charges. So a lot of people think Divine Hymn, which is our big raid cooldown, is pretty crap, right? And they're not wrong. On its own, it's actually not impressive whatsoever. So if this Divine Hymn, uh, this is our three-minute cooldown, heals all party or raid members within 40 yards for 400,000 over 6.4 seconds. And increases healing done to them by 10%. So on its own, it's not that impressive. But what you're trying to do is pair it up with the other abilities that you have. And we can further enhance this with talents. So going into a straight scenario of like, oh, here comes the raid damage, blur, divine him, I'm hoping for the best here, right? Uh, that's not going to get the job done. What you want to do is have prayer of mendings ticking and then bouncing around a hell of a lot and divine him, then activating those things and getting them going. So understanding those synergies is what's going to be important to you. Desperate Prayer, a spell that goes drastically underused. Uh, heal yourself for 30% of your maximum health and increase your maximum health by 30%, decreasing by 2% every second. So it's a one and a half minute cooldown that's pretty, you know, it's a desperate prayer. It's asking for a lot. <laughs> it's asking for a lot. But once you get into higher content, having that extra HP is pretty goddamn important. It really, really is. And it's something you want to be aware of in order to survive certain abilities. We have good defensives as a Holy Priest. Melee attacks against you cause you to gain focused will, reducing damage you take by 15% for 8 seconds, stacking up to 2 times, right? So we can do things like that. We can also fade, so we don't take any threat. Fade is one of the biggest keybinds and most important things you can have on a Holy Priest. Yeah, in terms of utility, you want to be able to fade on demand because you can fade, drop your threat while everything gets gathered. If mobs are spread out, helps the tank out massively. The sheer quantity of time that fade has pulled me out of the garbage 
is unbelievable. It's a wonderful spell to have on hand, and it's something you absolutely want to be aware of. Speaking back to Desperate Prayer then, damage you take is a chance to reset the cooldown of Desperate Prayer proportional to the magnitude of that damage. So if you are using Desperate Prayer just to buff your HP because of some big incoming damage, that big incoming damage also has a chance to reset your Desperate Prayer. And of course, in raid situations anyway, you're constantly taking some form of damage, even in Mythic Plus, all that kind of stuff, giving you more access to Desperate Prayers. This is an ability I think people very, very rarely ever cast. And now you should understand why that's really sad, because survivability is key to your gameplay. Not only that, we have Dispel Magic, of course, which is our offensive dispel. Yeah, so important that you know you can dispel and purge things off enemies. My god. Standing with, with priests who are like, someone dispel the boss. It's like, bro, you can do that, right? We also, of course, have our defensive dispel, so we can dis uh, obviously dispel magical effects on other people. And we also have access to Holy Nova, causing an explosion of holy lights. Only 20,000 mana around you, dealing 145,000 holy damage uh, to all enemies uh, within 12 yards. And there's a 20% chance to reset the cooldown of holy fire. So for more of an of offensive ability, as you can see, getting harmful in there with that. A really big raid cooldown is, of course, Guardian Spirit. It calls upon the Guardian Spirit to watch over the friendly target for 10 seconds. It increases healing received by 40%. That is enormous, guys. And preventing the target from dying by sacrificing itself. This sacrifice terminates the effect and heals the target for 5% of maximum HP castable while stuns. So you absolutely 100% need to be aware that you have this. There's so many times that I see other Holy Priests who are watching somebody die and panicking about it rather than just giving them fucking wings, which is what we call it. Giving them wings that automatically died, by the way, and saving themselves. Not only that, but when you cast it on someone else, it also activates on you. Yeah, increases healing received by 40% and will prevent one killing blow. So it's not a case of activating it on yourself. Even if you're going to use it on yourself, activating it on somebody else is always worthwhile because they're getting all that bonus. Not only that, I want you to be aware of Leap of Faith. Yeah, it's not just a troll spell, you motherfuckers. Hmm. It's an amazing spell and pulls people out of trouble or gets them into position, particularly if you're somebody who's practicing in LFR. And let's say you're doing Kill Jaden LFR, and that guy doesn't know that he's supposed to run into the boss with his shadow reflections. Leap of Faith. Leap of Faith saves people, saves tanks from knockbacks that they're bad about. If you know that knockback is coming, you can clearly see that he's going to be knocked in the wrong direction. Having Leap of Faith ready in order to save his ass it will show people instantly that you are a good holy priest and like, okay, let's bring you in. Master Spell. Now, Master Spell is crazy expensive, 88,000. A lot of people shouted at me when they saw me cast Master Spell. I just want to say on the back of that is, yes, it's way too expensive. And in most times, you're not going to need to be able to Master Spell people. But obviously, be aware you can Master Spell and that it's an offensive and defensive to spell. Be very aware of that. And also, in certain content, particularly Mythic Plus, there's loads of opportunities to drink. So trying to be super mana efficient to spare yourself like one gold for a water or something like that is just ridiculous. So be aware that you can get a lot of people out of trouble. Let's think about something like Eye of Ashara. Yeah, the Naga boss that stuns multiple people if they don't get out of the Static Nova. Dropping a Master Spell on them and running Oomd at the end of the fight is no big deal because you instantly get to drink after it. Her artifact ability then, the Light of Ture. I, I call it Ture, I'm sure you've all got different uh, pronunciations for it. It applies the Light of the Naru to the target, healing for 215k, not that impressive, and increasing your healing done to that target by 45% for 10 seconds. Good fucking God almighty. <gasps> so good. So good. Once again, it's not falling into the traps that you see a lot of Holy Priests. Let's say if this is our tank, our little training dummy friend here, and they're just like spamming him, like, I can't help this, I can't help this. Well, they could have just put a Light of Ture on it and just had massive, massive healing and made their life so much easier. Uh, this is something you just actively want to be using, right? You have two charges of it as standard. Getting a charge going is no big deal. It's no big deal at all. This is probably why you'll find uh, a lot of holy priests. Sometimes you'll have like one guy who is healing his ass off and is doing less healing and has way less mana than a holy priest who's beating him and seemingly casting less spells. And the big part of that with the holy priest is understanding the synergies that are going on between all your spells. Uh, let's talk about some other ones then. So critical heals with your flash heal have a chance and heal have a chance to imbue the essence of Ture, increasing all healing you do by 20%. That's enormous. Absolutely huge. There's the Light of Ture we talked about earlier. When you use the Holy uh, holy Word spell, you have a chance to summon an image of Ture at your side for 15 seconds. Whenever you cast a spell, it duplicates. It's not reliable. 
which is what a lot of people don't like when healing. They want reliability, uh, and that really causes problems here. But it is there, and it is a benefit knowing that he's uh, knowing that that is around, and it's all good stuff, right? It is an absolute benefit. Uh, we talked about prayer of mending. We talked about some other things as well. So let's talk about our talent. So you should have a general idea. Oh, let me talk about renew. Okay, so renew. Let's look at it. It's twenty-two thousand mana. Fill the target with faith and the light, healing them instantly for 40k, not a lot, and then 250 over 15 seconds. It's very, very expensive for what it actually does. Now, if you're a classic Holy Priest, so if you're watching this and you're returning from, say, WAD or previous, right, everything up until now, pretty much, you'll be very tempted to keep Renew going. I know I was. I know I was when I picked up my Holy Priest. I was like, oh, I should renew the targets. You will go out of mana so fucking fast and get no healing out of it right? We have different ways of using Renew. Right now, it's not a dead spell, and nothing in the in the healing toolkit is a dead spell. No matter what anybody tries to tell you, there is nothing that is a dead spell. Uh, but actively, like, proactively keeping Renews up, certainly in a raid environment, is a really stupid thing to do, because you're going to run out of mana, and that's not a good idea. Uh, also, do we are Shackle Undead, very handy in Legion in certain scenarios, and something you absolutely want to be aware of. So those are our spells, and those are how they work together. So how do we spec this guy? Well, it depends what you're doing. As I said earlier, no tool goes unused. But there are obviously some that are used less than others. And what you want to do is always be looking at your Holy Priest about and what content is about to face. You can't just say things like, is he raiding or is he doing Mythic Plus? Right? You can't just say that. Because when, certainly when we go into Mythic Plus, it's like, well, what affixes are we doing? And what is the composition? What are we dealing with? Is it fortified? Is it tyrannical? Is it skittish? Is it whatever? Am I likely to be doing spot healing, double healing, whatever? You need to think about these things. So let me explain what's going on here. So first of all, we have enlightenment. This is generally the go-to raid talent. You regenerate mana 10% faster. So obviously raid encounters tend to last longer than most Mythic Plus encounters, but obviously that varies the higher up you go, uh, which means just having flat out more mana and being able to do more is a good idea. Now on top of that, it's not just a case of that. But in raid environments, you have multiple healers, which means your niches become more niche and you tend to be put into one particular role. And when it comes to the Holy Priest, it's generally spot healing and raid healing. And therefore, you're going to be actively switching between various other spells to do uh, lots of different maneuvers, which means enlightenment and just having more mana to keep that going is a good idea. Enduring renewal then. Your single target healing spells refresh the duration of your renew on the target. I wish this was better than what it is, but you're going to see when we get to the bottom of the tier that it's actually not. Trail of Light, I take this in any Mythic Plus, okay? So I don't want Enlightenment or Enduring Renewal in Mythic Plus. One, because I can drink a lot in Mythic Plus, uh, but in a raid environment, I can't do that. So that's why Enlightenment comes back in. Trail of Light, when you cast Flash Heal, 40% of the healing is replicated to the previous target you healed with Flash Heal. Not knowing, the, taking this because you read it somewhere, and I, I see this a lot, of course, is people copying a build for something and not understanding how this works is just, again, detrimental to your own healing. So what you have is the ability to cast heat Flash Heal on two targets. So if I cast Flash Heal on the dummy and then heal myself, you can see the way it's replicated over there. Once again, if I cast on the dummy, that then replicates to me. Vice versa, backwards and forwards, right? What Trail of Light doing is basically giving me one and a half flash heals for one flash heal, making that spell far more efficient and useful, particularly when you're in something like Mythic Plus, where you're the only healer and you have to heal multiple people, making Trail of Light an absolute value total value but understanding that you want to be swipping swapping around your targets and that doesn't necessarily mean you've stopped healing one of the targets that's not how it works if you take this talent angelic feather is just amazing angelic feather is pretty much the only choice here in most scenarios so you have when you cast renew yourself it reduces all damage you take by 10 percent of course of course of course if you need that damage reduction which you will do the higher up you go with your holy priest take perseverance right take perseverance for the mage tower you take perseverance if you're getting hammered by a couple of ads you would just mage tower it because you don't need to angelic feather people obviously if you're not casting angelic feather then don't take angelic feather uh body and mind heals the target for 33,000 every one second and increases their movement speed by five percent so it's the replication for the fact that we don't have power word shield this is not worthwhile compared to Angelic Feather because what you actually want from Body and Mind is the ability to make people move faster. Nothing is better than Angelic Feather. And good Holy Priest will be saying, oh, there's the tank. He's about to run this way. I'm going to get the Feather down for him so he can get to the trash easier. So he comes off this and he moves off and he moves through it. Looking for ways and uses of Leap of Faith and Angelic Feathers really adds so much fun to your gameplay. It's very important. But obviously, if you need the damage reduction, take Perseverance. 
Let's go. Level 45. Generally, you're going to go without a censure or afterlife. So, afterlife increases the duration of Spirit of Redemption by 50%. And I'm sure many of you are aware of, I don't have it, got it equipped, but I do have one, is this cloak. Which is Zanashi, Shroud of the Archbishop Benedictus. We consider Bis by most holy priests and something that's very sought after. Uh, something you probably want to pick up. Uh, after Spirit of Redemption expires. So this is when you die. Okay, so holy priests don't really die. They, When they die, they turn into a lovely angel uh, called the Spirit of Redemption. And allows them to keep healing for a long time. Very important because sometimes you're going to die, right? It's as simple as that. Sometimes you're going to die. And being able to heal more because healers dying, certainly in a raid or even in a Mythic Plus environment, can lead to a wipe. Being able to buy that extra time is very cool. Uh, and also, if you have something like this cloak, you get all that free healing. And then this also returns you back to life. So you have a free resurrection that comes after you go into Spirit of Redemption, which makes afterlife very worthwhile in those scenarios. However, in uh, further on from that is Censure. Holy Word Chastise stuns the target five seconds and is not broken by damage. A good way of making people stay alive is preventing things from doing damage to them, <laughs> right? It seems like common sense, but I'm sure more holy, most holy priests spec afterlife and never look back, and I'm sure somebody will argue that down below. However, once you start moving up, and you're confident you're not going to die that much, uh, this extra 50% uh, afterlife ain't that important compared to being able to stun the fuck out of mobs regularly that are killing you, that have bolstered, that are like raging on the tank. Being able to stun them down for five seconds is a massive help, because particularly with the regularity that we can use Holy Word Chastise, as you know from being able to throw in some smites, right? As I showed you earlier on. Shining Force, then create a burst of light around the friendly target, knocking away nearby enemies and slowing their movement speed. So it's the slow you really want there. Nobody really likes the knockback. But if you find a scenario that you want to be able to AoE slow for your party, yeah, maybe something like Necrotic. Yeah, maybe something like that. Your tank's getting Necrotic and he needs to kite and you need to help him out. You have the ability to do that. And you should be aware that Holy Priest can bring that utility. Moving down there, Light of the Naru. Serendipity reduces the remaining cooldown on the appropriate Holy Word by an additional two seconds. So we talked about this earlier. This ability to reset these spells is like the main bread and butter of the Holy Priest. This is what you're going to take in nearly all scenarios, okay? Guardian Angel, when Guardian Spirit expires without saving the target for death, reduce the cooldown by 90 seconds. Again, very handy if you need to use this all the, line, all the time. And you're actually using Guardian Spirit not to prevent death, but to get the bonus healing and all that kind of stuff, right? There is clear uses for that. But generally speaking, Light of the Narrow works all the time. Guardian Spirit isn't something you want to be relying on on regularity, right? I don't want to be relying on this cooldown every single pack. That's not the way it's going to go down. Being able to constantly reset my holy words is generally better. Similar with Symbol of Hope. So it's a six-minute cooldown. It's instant. You bolster the morale of all healers in your party or raid with four yards, allowing them to cast spells for no man of 12 seconds. Look, I'm going to say it. Like, it's a cool idea, but there ain't no way in hell you are going to sacrifice all the healing you get from having your holy words back for this for six minutes of 12 seconds out of six minutes they're gonna get to cast for free there may be some boss out there with some mechanic where this is absolutely crucial right that reduces the manner of every person in the raid to zero for some period of time uh, but people need to live you know things like that but right now, I think this spell should probably just be baked into the Holy Priest to add some more utility raid-wide. Because there ain't no way you're giving up all that Holy Word healing that's happening all the time for 12 seconds every 6 minutes to do something like that. Uh, level 75 there. So, good choices here again. So, you get Piety. Prayer of Mending's cooldown is reduced by 2 seconds, and it now triggers Serendipity, which we talked about before, reducing the remaining cooldown Holy Word Sanctify. So, Prayer of Mending is something most of the time you're going to want to keep on cooldown right? You're going to be flinging it off to various targets. You're going to make sure you're tracking it and using it because it has lots of good synergies. It, it's doing so much passive healing and it's super cheap. So piety comes in very handy. Binding heal though heals you and another friendly target. So what you're doing here is healing yourself and somebody else at the same time and a third friendly target with 20 yards for 161,000. So not a great deal. It triggers serendipity reducing the remaining cooldown on both your holy words. I don't think people realize it does that. Unfortunately, it's so situational. It's so situational to what you're doing that it kind of gets left behind. That's the unfortunate truth about it, despite how fast it is. Surge of Light, a spell, uh, a talent I really do not like with my healer. Your healing spells and smite have an 8% chance, so it's pretty fucking low, honestly, uh, to make your next flash heal instant and cost no mana, maximum two charges. Again, I talked about randomness with healers, and it's not nice. Surge of Light is too goddamn random. You can have it proc constantly for some reason when you don't need it. And then when you need it, it's not there. 
and you generally feel like you've just wasted your goddamn time. A helicopter just flew over, by the way, so that might be in the background, and <laughs> there's not much I can do about that. Let's move down then. Level 90, Halo and Divine Star. Create, uh, Halo creates a ring of holy energy around you that quickly expands to a 30 yard radius and heals everybody and deals damage, right? So you get this AoE heal. It's only for like 150k, not a big deal. Uh, Divine Star, you throw a star forward 24 yards and allies in its path. It heals them, does some damage. After reaching its destination, it comes back and heals allies and damage in its path again. So you get this like free little heal. Uh, I want to, I'm, only, I'm reading them all so I can compare them to the one you're probably going to take, uh, which is Divinity. When you heal with Holy Word Spell, your healing is increased by 15% for 6 seconds. What do you want, really? Again, it comes down to this reliability factor for me. Divine Star is great. It's a funky little spell. So is Halo. Uh, but comparing it to like 15% extra healing when I'm throwing out Holy Words and being able to reset those Holy Words, if I'm in a scenario where I am resetting the shit out of my Holy Words and trying to get them all fucking going, and I'm like, this guy needs to be healed right goddamn now, having all that extra healing and knowing I definitely have it, that's what I want. You can see that divinity coming in there. And this is where you're going to be able to save lives. You throw in two herbs, and what you're doing is stacking all this plus healing. You're just stacking it all on top of each other, making it absolutely fucking huge amounts of healing. Again, more bang for your buck, costing less mana, making you more efficient. Uh, and that, therefore, divinity tends to beat both of these. But again, situational, right tool for the right job, as always. At level 100, you're going to either want Benediction or Apotheosis. So, Circle of Healing, the classic Holy Priest toolkit from Ward, now a talent, heals five injured allies in 30 yards at the target for 161,000. We just don't need it. You know, that's the problem with it. We just don't need it. If your Prayer of Mendings are ticking, which they will do by habit, and you've got your Holy Word Sanctifying, you've got Piety, and you've got Prayer of Healing, and all these things combined, so you've got Prayer of Mendings bouncing around, you've, you're have you resetting your Holy Word, and you're doing AOE healing and all this kind of thing, you just don't need it. It doesn't fit a good purpose anymore, and that's the problem with it, compared to the other two. So Benediction is generally what you take in a lot of raid scenarios. Your Prayer of Mending has a 40% chance to leave Renew on each target it heals. So what you'll see is most raiders will take Benediction. We're already keeping Prayer of Mending on cooldown anyway, and this obviously synergizes well with Piety. Uh, but now, all that Renew that we've not bothered casting because it's not very efficient is now happening absolutely for free. And you'll actually find out that because Prayer of Mending is bouncing so much and leaving so many Renews, that at the end of the fight, Renew could be your top healing spell. And you never casted a single fucking one. Right? And it all comes down to how you're using Prayer of Mending and bouncing it around and using it correctly. You can imagine... If you pair this up with Divine Hymn with a lot of Prayer of Mendings going, and this is ticking every second and renewing the whole... Do you see how it all adds on top of each other to form this, like, cake of healing? It's really quite wonderful. Other than that, though, Apotheosis. Do we need it? Uh, in Mythic Plus, yes. <laughs> in Mythic Plus, yes. Renew isn't going to do much in Mythic Plus uh, because you'll be trying to top people as fast as possible and keep going and then, heal and then drinking up to do it all again. So much more burst healing. But, enter a pure holy farm for 30 seconds, increasing the effects of serendipity by 200% and reducing the cost of your holy words by 100%, making them free. So, I'm going to have to... I have Apotheosis. Uh, I love Apotheosis because if there's ever a moment that my guys are in danger, Apotheosis is going to save my life. Uh, so, I'm going to show you holy words uh, serenity here. So, it's on cooldown for one minute. Pop Apotheosis. Look, Swagger. Look at the cooldown on this. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> look how quickly it comes back. Give me it. Give me it, baby. Fucking give me it. Isn't that cool? It's very cool. It's huge amounts of healing. And of course, you could translate into AoE healing, into DPS if you want to. Uh, really wonderful three-minute cooldown that alters your gameplay and does all kinds of wonderful things for you. And that's what I think is incredible about it. So there's the Holy Priest for you, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully through that, I kind of showed you a lot of the gameplay uh, that's involved here. Generally speaking, for a basic starter, keep Prayer of Mending on cooldown. Make sure you're getting some the stuff like the uh, Light of Ture on cooldown as well. So you're using it, using it on your tanks, using it on whatever. And then just remember that you have all these little things you can be doing. And you want to be actively mixing in damage abilities with this, yeah? You want to actively be mix mixing in damage abilities while you're healing. You can notice I have my spells hidden for the idea that I can mouse over people. So I need to heal me, carry on doing damage. All these things are what make this important and make you a very, very active, very fluid and very, very unique spec because you can actively be taking part in multiple situations all at once and helping out your friends and saving lives 
while being able to adapt to many scenarios. And the good thing about the Holy Words is you adapt very, very quickly to different shifting scenarios, which is what a lot of other healers do not do. In conclusion, you can probably see the Holy Priest is just a raw healing beast, but it does have a lot of intricacies and synergies that make it way more interesting than it might seem on the surface. A lot of people, certainly I did very initially, presumed it to be kind of dull and kind of boring, but what you have is utility and gameplay that actually keeps you on your toes and allows you to feel very satisfied with what you do. Some add-ons that I would recommend then are certainly something like We Chorus or Tell Me When to keep a nice track of when those holy words are resetting. It's very important that you, do, that you know exactly when you're going to be doing that and taking advantage of it. I would also recommend that you configure your raid frames in some way. Blizzard's kind of does it as standard, but to track where those prayer of mendings are bouncing, when they're leaving renews, when they're getting ready to fail you or let you down so you can quickly adapt to that situation and remedy it as quickly as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Priest. Enjoy, because you can do some wonderful things with this thing.